Hello and welcome to Chicago Arts. This is Martin John and I'll be your host. This interview is with Gordon McClellan of Creeping Toad who came in to Chicago to work with X-Wing on a lantern festival in Millennium Park. My background originally is in zoology and I'm trained as an ecologist and a teacher and I use creativity and art as a way of getting people to explore their relationships with themselves and with the world around them. So I don't come into things necessarily as an artist, I come into things much more as an environmentalist as an, and as an educator. And most of my work has been about that relationship between people and place and getting people to celebrate the places where they live and work and play. And out of that grew a desire in our hometown, Buxton and Derbyshire in England, um, to do something in the coldest, most depressing bit of the year that was about why it's wonderful to live where we do. Well, Paul and I both worked with Nick when he was still in UK, and we'd worked on community participation projects, again, on that relationship between people and place, and people and place and time, looking at uh, communities and how communities grow and change, and looking at that creatively. And then when Nick came here, and started working on projects in Chicago with the suggestion of a Lantern Festival to tie in with Museums of Modern Night. He felt that the community participation role was one that hadn't been explored so much here and that he felt it would be useful to bring out people like Paula and myself whose experiences in that field more um, to help with that process. So that was, that was our introduction to Chicago and to this project. The big differences for us were having a big team of local artists who had taken everything on board long before we met people, where things were evolving really fast and growing, and had grown a long way before we ever, almost before we met the project, it was really interesting. So it was coming in and seeing things were already happening. And that made a difference in the end because we had more finished, more polished pieces to, to build into the procession. Right. I mean, at home, a lot of our procession type work had to happen quite quickly. We often don't have much funding. So this was a more planned, more considered uh, development right. of a procession. Working with the artists and the students at the school was great. People were really hospitable really welcoming. It was exciting to be with such creative people and people who were so determined in their own creativity. I mean a lot of my works with people who are very unsure of their own are very unsure of their own creativity, often quite lacking in confidence. And it's building up that confidence and persuading people they can do things. And here we had people who were just off and running, you know, before we'd ever met them and that was brilliant. Um, it was also good to see people stepping outside their own comfort zones, you know, working with Artists were used to performing in one way and we were asking them to perform in different ways and to perform without their familiar structures of scripts for actors and things like that or definite patterns for musicians and just asking people to improvise. And that turned up with the students as well. You know, they were very clearly in new territory and it was lovely to see them being prepared to take risks. Rather than us not being engaged with it or, or anything like that, think other people perhaps worrying that we were coming in to take it over, which we didn't want to do, and that was one of our concerns, is that we were suddenly seen as the people who just come in, grab everything and tell people exactly what they should do, right. and trying not to do that. Right. You can never hold back string can be sure I will never stop believing the blushing rose that will climb 